Hey guys, and welcome to a showdown between two warrior legends of old. On the left-hand side, we have Sergeant Spaghetti, representing Sons of the Mountain, up against ODM's very own Mahmood. And it is the grudgiest grudge match of all time. The War of the Beard, the War of Vengeance, whatever you want to call it. The Dowie versus the Elgi. Should be a good fun scrap here, and I'm a big fan of both of these builds. Both of them going a little bit off meta, which is always good to see. New ideas coming into the multiplayer scene. So for the Dwarf Forces, it's relatively elite. We do have cheap and cheerful Dwarf Warriors dotted along the front line, but in the central pockets is where things get really interesting. We have two units of Hammerers, and I know Sergeant Spaghetti has been experimenting with this unit a bit more in recent times, and with their armor piercing and decent mass, they can certainly do a good number over on Chariots. We've got some Dwarf Warriors with great weapons, and they're going to be accompanying an Ungrim Iron Fist, the greatest slayer to ever live. Or perhaps so, I mean, he's not dead yet, and that is kind of a slayer's job. We have Iron Drakes with Trollhammer Torpedoes, two units, one on either side. Again, very good at taking down chariots. We have Triple Slayers, always quite a useful unit to pin down enemy large creatures. Dragons, knights, all that niceness. And they're very quick, so they can be used to chase down archers as well. We have two cannons, just to apply some pressure onto the High Elf forces. Now for the High Elves in general, again, it's a little bit strange. So we have Spearmen dotted throughout, and then these guys can do basically no damage whatsoever. But they will hold the line for an incredibly long time, which is always useful when you have so much range firepower potential. Triple Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower and Triple Sisters of Avalon. This is Avalon may seem like a weird pick here because they do magic damage, but they have so much burst with that AP that they certainly can pierce the thick armor of the Dowie folk. Although they do have fire damage as well, so those Iron Drakes are going to be causing big problems. We have a Mage of Shadows coming in with a Humble Pendulum, very good spell here, and a couple of Silver Helms in the back to help protect the rather large range contingent. Alephanar shall be leading the forces, stalking from the shadows, firing his Moonbow to start the battle. Aiming at Ungram and completely missing in Elvish fashion, does manage to catch some Dwarf Warriors with great weapons in the back line though. Really good experience play right coming in by Sanj Spaghetti, taking his cannon crewman off the cannons. Now you're going to have to just be sitting up, lining and shooting a single file of dwarfs. So at best you're going to kill one dwarf per shot, wasting the ammo on those bolt throwers, allowing the hammers and other such units to close the distance. Dwarf Warriors have their shields raised, but are still taking huge damage coming in now from the sisters who are just pouring that in. First pendulum attempt does come down the line, attempting to catch three units and doing Basically no damage there. That was probably not overcast, I would assume. Major Shadows is going to be bounding back and forth, hitting at different units where possible. But I love this play. Silver Helms detaching themselves from the main engagement and whipping around the sides to try to shut down those cannon crews who still haven't yet hopped back on their cannons. Although Sergeant Spaghetti seems to know his ploy, pulling back the Slayers in a little bit of a protection gambit. Good play there by both players. Spearmen are on the lines where there is gaps and where they have formed. The dwarfs change their formation to a smaller front where they can then wiggle their way through and start getting on to the Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers. However, the High Elves have responded to this by bringing back their spearmen who are now going to be caught between a rock and a very, very heavy hammer. Silver Helms in the back line still trying to dart on top of those cannon crews who have now all popped on once more. They may get shut down here. Silver Helms do have the numbers advantage over the Slayers, whipping up and around, driving down onto the cannons. But they should be able to get off with one or two more volleys. There they go, launching their shots across the battlefield onto the Mage of Shadows, doing horrific damage. The Iron Dregs are singing as well. And that Mage of Shadows gets deleted in a matter of seconds. Really bad uh, kind of incident there for the High Elves because this Major Shadows is really key to bringing down so many of the beefy hammer units. Spim and do push in onto the Dwarf Warriors as the Sisters of Avalon are still very well protected, taking the high ground. There's also some Eagle Claw Bolt Throws still all on online actually, all three of them supplying some really good damage. Alephanar is trying to hunt down Ungrim who's duking his best in the back of lines here, falling back behind his fellow Slayers and Iron Drakes as more Dwarf Warriors and Hammers do start to push uphill, looking to shut down the Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower. But their crew, I think, oh no, that's the Spearmen who are running through. I thought he was going to be doing a same trick that the Dowie player was doing and pull these guys off their crew and run them back. Instead, he's decided to fire point blank range into their face, swearing and uh, trying to drag them down any means necessary. In the back lines, cannons were forced off by the Silver Helms, so one that is back online once more. Silver Helms come crashing in to the front line, trying to deal with the Dwarf Warriors. The high off player, realising the struggle he's having, protecting the Triple Sisters and Triple Bolt Throwers, is going to have to use these Silver Helms in a more defensive 
capacity, which is definitely a really good idea here. Dwarf Warriors have been beaten back and are able to flee once more before the Slayers can catch up. Sisters of Avalon certainly want to switch their target onto those Slayers in an attempt to drag them down in the relatively near future. Major Shadows does bounce back onto these Dwarf Warriors who manage to get into the back line and for their reward, they're going to be getting run over by Elvish Steeds and Claws. Not going too well there for the Dwarf Warriors. Those some cannon shots are coming in once more. That Major Shadows needs to be really careful despite the huge pressure applied to these cannons. They're still getting relatively decent value by taking out the magic contingent of the Hail Forces. Silverhelms do dart back to protect the e claw bolt thrower who is standing its ground continuing to shoot on a little bit longer. Major Shadows getting very low here is going to oh just do about duke a cannon shot with a well-timed halt and a big pendulum coming down a tiny bit a little too late though. Hammers take some damage but nothing too scary whatsoever. Ungrim is getting very, very low. Eclaw Bolfra is able to shoot in. There's a very brief shield wall of spears holding back the dwarf warriors. Eclaw Bolfra, though, is looking to reposition slightly. Alephnath continues to fire in. Poor Ungrim down to just 700 health. One of the cannon crewmen getting a little bit eager here. Are going to be charging into hand-to-hand -hand combat before getting restrained back once more. Perhaps Science Brigade didn't realise they were off their artillery piece. Ungrim, all 470 health. Not looking too good for him. Alephnath has been... Uh, plenty of ammunition left as well. Hammers getting shot in the rear. Try hammer torpedoes do start to move up to start applying a little bit more pressure here till the spear formation, which is starting to fall. Ungrim is uh, not looking too happy. Let's have a look how he's doing. Zero kills. Oof, that is not a good death for a slayer. Zero value. He's desperately trying to juke. You can see him wiggling around and the little attack orders give him a nice little wiggle to try to keep him alive, but. 234 health. I think one more shot from Alephanar and he could well be going down. Bolt throws starting to fire shots in as well, though they are missing. So Ungrim shall survive a little while longer as once again he tries to juke and twirl where possible. But down he goes, hit by Alephanar's accuracy. And Ungrim with zero value. The most disgraceful way for a slayer to die. Oh, this is going to go into the Book of Grudges. But there is a long page already dedicated to the High Elves. Slayers are pushing through and I certainly don't think it's over for the Dwarf Forces despite the loss of their Lord. Balance power doesn't favour them but a lot of that is going to be coming to the fact they've lost their Lord and the Sisters of Avalon are all still full health but starting to run a little low on ammunition. Good targeting priority from the Dwarfs looking to hunt down the Sisters of Avalon who have the most ammunition. Always good to try to focus down on your opponent where it's going to hurt you the most. Let's have a little look at the cannons. One of them is... Are they back online? I think they're able to fire one cannon with the few crewmen they have left. The other one is firing all three artillery pieces. And there's no longer any more pressure coming in from the High Elves. These Silver Helms are desperately charging in get time after time after time into these Iron Drakes, trying to force them off. But the Slayers, ever watchful, are pulling them down from their steeds, dragging them through the muck and the mud. Slayers, both units are hunting down the sisters of Avalon. Looks like their fellow sisters are trying to crossfire in an attempt to save them. These sisters probably want to turn and engage, I would think, for the most part. They're relatively decent melee combatants. They're only going to be taking a little bit of friendly fire and the uh, axes in the back from the slayers if they continue to run here. More slayers starting to push up the hill, looking to shut down the Eclaw bolt for as well as the double sisters, who are out of ammunition. This one completely gone. The other one down to two volleys, not looking too good there. Dwarf Warriors also piling through onto the bolt throws. Looks like they are fighting the crew now. Alephanar is still alive. Balance power still... Oh, no, it's gotten slightly back more to the Dwarf Ave, which I would agree with at this point. Both the cannons are going to be completely uninterrupted at this point. Can shoot in, do some good damage to the sisters. And who needs a Dowie Lord when you have the might of the Iron Drakes on your side? Both units still with a ton of ammunition. And the hammer is moving through the centre of the Elvish formation. Looking to crush the spirit of the elves. And Alephanar is here. He's certainly not going to be having a good time up against these hammers and slayers. He does come with some barrel rolls though. Knocking a few of those dwarfs on the, to their backside. And uh, decapitating some of them as well. You can see these poor slayer heads dotted around the battlefield. Hammers getting a bit of a clobber in. But the hammers and slayers are mighty. Balance power ebbs and flows more and more into favour of the dwarvish folk. As the hammers start to get to work on Alephanar. Eclob Botfra is getting shut down from range now by the cannons. A few silver helms, just ten, do decide to rally back to Alephanar in a desperate attempt to save him. Sister Avalon though getting destroyed by the Iron Drakes. Both units, one on either side, pulling up some nice firing positions, looking to destroy the sisters. The second unit of Iron Drakes shall be covering the first. And yeah, you can charge in with your cavalry, do some nice shock damage. There's still eight models here though, and 125 armor is certainly no joke. 
The Slaves do finally catch the sisters and manage to put them in their place, killing them, dragging them down and moving them off the battlefield where they are unfortunately going to be getting slain here, proving that dwarfs better than elves. You heard it here first on the channel, though I do actually secretly love the wood elves as well in particular, and high elves are a very fun faction to play, particularly Alephanar. Big fan of this pick. I think he's uh, thematically my favourite elf by quite a considerable margin. As he finds some of his last shots into the Andrex, doing some good damage. The Sisters of Avalon trying to cling on. These warrior women beating the crap out of some dwarfs. But in return, the dwarfs are having absolute vengeance themselves, dragging them through. Cannons continue to fire into the block of Sisters here, doing some nice damage. The Silverhelms tried to get into the back line. It looks like they were driving off some Dwarf Warriors. 25 of them as well, which isn't bad value whatsoever. But a few cannon shots do pit the Silverhelms on their backside and fleeing from the battlefield. And with that, it looks like the game is going to go in the favour of the Dwarfs. I don't think Alephanar there's any way. There's just too many Dwarf Warriors around. And the Hammers have taken a little bit of a beat. I'm surprised how well Alephanar has done in combat here. 90 kills, 1,800 damage value. He's certainly not done too shabby whatsoever. The Sisters of Avalon proving they are pretty solid melee combatants coming in with that 37 and 39 melee attack and melee defense respectively. More slaves are coming in though to surround them and start to drag them down. I'm also sets in and another grudge is written off the book. But likewise, as the cycle of the book of grudges goes, another one is added by Ungrim being slain. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. It was some pretty insane stuff. A very Pyrrhic victory. Well played to uh, Mahmood here. Despite the loss, really interesting build. Not going with your typical chariot spam of um, line, char line chariots, uh, like the units, the nobles on chariots, all that kind of crazy stuff. Mix it up a little bit and try and something else. And I'm excited to see the damage value on those sisters at Avon. Likewise, Silent Spaghetti, bring in the hammerers and they certainly prove their worth because it's a problem of fret overload. The High Elves, they need to target down the Hammerers, because otherwise they're going to destroy their infantry, but they can't target them down, because they need to get rid of those cannons, or the cannons are going to kill them. But, Simon Spaghetti, here simply fall off the cannon, and you're constantly having to switch your shots with those bolt throwers, and even if you kill both of them, then you've got the Iron Drake Troll Hammer Torpedoes to deal with. So I really like this idea of having the three pairs of two here, the Hammerers, the Iron Drakes, the cannons, that is the triple threat. And at the end of the day, the rest of the build still can pack a pretty decent punch, though it is a little bit more cheaper and cheerful. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We will go through the damage value in just a second, but if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a big fat thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well for some more glorious Total War Warhammer content. What was your favorite part of the battle? Let me know down below in the uh, comments. What was your favorite moment? Who was your MVP? And uh, which boy will you be rooting for in the future? And what would you like to see on the channel going forward? I'm considering doing some Vermintide streams at some point. I think I mentioned this ages ago, or some Dawn of War streams. But I don't know if uh, people will be interested in that. So again, just let me know down below. Also, in the description, you can find links to my Discord where you can submit replays like Sergeant Spaghetti, the man, the myth, the legend himself did indeed do. So yeah, pop onto there. There's a load of cool people who can teach you the game, help hone your skills, you can get involved in the tournament scene in general, and see a load of cool pictures of ducks. There's also a link to my Patreon down below in the description if you would like to support the channel in any other way. But on to the glorious stuff, so Ungrim. I, I, I have no words. Zero kills, zero damage dealt, zero damage value. Probably the worst way for a Slayer to go, and arguably the second most Slayer, uh, famous Slayer of all time, to go out like this is very sad, particularly up against their hated enemy, the High Elves. Dwarf Warriors across the board didn't do uh, too much damage value, but they weren't there to do that, likewise the Great Weapons. There to hold the line, allow the rest of the build to really do uh, pack a lot of the punch. However, the Dwarf Warriors did actually swarm through, start causing a lot of problems for Mahmood and his high elf forces and make him drag those silver helms back to protect his back lines which then allowed the cannons to get back on the line once more. Not the craziest damage value on one of them but the other one at 1147 taking out that shadow caster was a really nice pickup. Triple Slayers did very good themselves, 860 damage value, 889, 1,221, certainly not too shabby. Likewise, both the Hammerers, it was a bit of a two different stories. One of them got nuked down, 591 damage value, but the other one, 1,410, smashing those Hammers into the face of Alephanar. Both the Triumph Torpedoes did very solid pain for themselves, 946 damage here, 1,004 on the other unit. As for Mahmood, big fan of his build as well. The Equal Bolt Throws did relatively okay. 885 damage value here. The others faring slightly worse, but that was generally due to the good micromanagement of Sergeant Spaghetti taking his men off their war machines, forming that real thin line to ensure the Bolt Throws couldn't punish the Dwarves too much. 
Silver Helms did some really nice work. 595 on one, 1348 on the other. And a lot of that was just due to the backline harass they could do, rear charging the enemies, breaking dwarf units off the field and running them down. So this is Avalon, let's see how they perform. I'm rather interested in this one. They've got the AP, but that magic damage can drag them back a little bit in this here. 1,289 damage value, 600 and 1,192. It's all around some pretty solid work and fantastic backline protection by Mahmood all throughout. These spearmen were simply there to form shield walls and hold the enemy back, which they certainly did for a long time. Poor Mage of Shadows with some really unlucky pendulums. I like the idea of the first one. I think it is almost better though going along the ranks of a single unit to really try and nuke it down rather than trying to catch too many of them and a slightly mistimed one on those hammers pushing her back but the cannons really did punish her. As for Alephanar, 1861 damage value, very nice stuff from him, assassinating a character as highly sought after as Ungrim and it looks like he managed to survive the battle as well with a little bit of health left at the end so I'm sure he will be licking his wounds and plotting vengeance on the dwarfs. Hey anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.